Well, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. Welcome to my 2020 drugstore favorites. Now, the first thing I want to say going into this video is if you missed my 2020 high-end makeup favorites, I'm going to link that video for you right here. Definitely think as far as like my favorites in 2020, I did have way more in that video than I do in this one because honestly, drugstore for me in 2020 really didn't slap that hard. Like it was, I mean, yeah, there were some good things and there were definitely things that I loved, but there really weren't a ton of like new introductions to my life that I was just like, oh my God, like blown away with. And you guys know me. I'm a huge drugstore fan. Actually, hey, while, while we're on the topic, I just got done filming this, which was going through and testing out the new um, e.l.f. mint collection. And I gave you guys some updates on the previous e.l.f. makeup I had tried. So if you haven't seen it, it went up Monday for you. I'll go ahead and link it up here. But uh, yeah, just for me, I, I felt like the drugstore, if I'm being honest, I feel like the drugstore has already done better like mid-December through now in January of, of 2021 than it did in all of 2020 for me. Like that that's the difference that I'm having. And again, it could have been just a me issue, but either way, I wanted to go through and give you guys my favorites and get into it. Now, before we do that, I also want to mention, as per usual, that uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, turn on your post notifications. Please be sure to do that before you leave, especially right now. I'm noticing a ton of people are leaving me comments saying that you're not seeing my videos. You're like literally weeks are going by. You're not seeing content from me. And I don't want that for you. So make sure that your notifications are on, that you are subscribed. Again, all of that is available down below. And also make sure that you have taken a second and went and followed me over on Instagram. That is also linked in the description box. Uh, because I do post a ton of content over there, even on the days where I'm not going to post on here. Um, obviously, I tell you that over there, but then we still hang out in, you know, the IG stories. I post content there um, in the feed like five to seven days a week. There's always something going on. We have a plus size fashion. We have reels, makeup tutorials, all that kind of stuff. Also, along with Instagram will be linked in the description box. I'll have all of this makeup we're talking about um, as much as I can. If anything's not available, then it's, it's obviously not available, but I will have everything I can linked below. If you want to shop it, I will have this outfit, which is from Mod Cloth. I am freaking obsessed. But anyways, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get going into our first product. And I'm going to start off just like I did in my high-end video and go these, go through these in the order that I normally would do my makeup. And for primers and foundation, you guys, well, actually primer, foundation, and concealer, I really didn't have much to talk about because when I look back at 2020, I think to myself, like th this is how I try to do these videos. I, I always go first by my memory. Is there anything that stood out? Anything that I was just like, <gasps> like I can't live, breathe, function without it. Like it had such an impact on me. And honestly, Honestly, there really wasn't anything that just it, it really hit me some kind of way so I did have to get a little creative on this part and I because typically with these videos if you don't know I try not to pull from previous years but there were a couple of things honestly from 2019 that they were my standout favorite for 2020 as well so I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the elf poreless putty primer this primer is really really nice if you are trying to get a feel for that um, putty type consistency if you're wanting to see if it's for you this is a beautiful beautiful option at the drugstore more pore filling nice and smoothing and I really do like it. Now, I do not like the matte version or the luminous version. I think both of those are hot fire shit trash garbage. But this one, the original, is really, really good. So this is the only primer that I have to mention um, from 2020. And then also the only foundation, and if you've been here for longer than like two weeks, you should know this. Okay, say it with me. The Catrice HD Liquid Full Coverage. You guys, this is my favorite foundation from the drugstore. Hands down, I freaking love it. And you know, yes, there are a couple of other favorites. I love the L'Oreal True Match and you know other ones like that that I've talked about before. But when I think back to all of 2020, the drugstore foundation that I reached for the most hands down was this one. I love it. The coverage is super customizable. It's everything from sheer to super duper full coverage. Very, very easy to apply. It is thin. It is skin-like. It is beautiful. I, I recommend this to literally everyone. I think it's like $10.99, $12.99 right in there. All right, so going into concealers, I have two that I want to mention. This one from CoverGirl, the undercover concealer. I have talked about this so many times. I have for sure talked about it in my 2019 favorites, but I wanted to give it a huge shout out because I distinctly remember going from 2019 into 2020. This was one of my favorite concealers. I used it all the time. If I actually, I think I even took this one with me to Colorado, um, you know, way back when like traveling was a thing back at, again, the end of 2019. And I think for me too, the texture of this is like that perfect in between. If you don't like it super thin or super thick, this is just like right in the middle. It is beautiful. The coverage is fantastic and it looks amazing on the under eyes. It's very much so for me, like a, a soft matte type texture, which I really like. And then also along with that, I wanted to mention the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear Concealer. And I think like transitioning out of the CoverGirl Concealer, this was kind of my other favorite concealer of 2020. I do love the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer, but I definitely found myself reaching for this one more. And I feel like it actually works better for like all over the face application. It works better than the e.l.f. one does for me. And so if I had to pick one of those two, I would pick this one. I think that the, um, the staying power for me is a little 
little bit better, the blend is better, and like I said before, I can use this not only under the eyes, but I can also use it on my face, and it presses in beautifully. Very, very, again, skin-like finish. I feel like that's kind of been my theme with concealers and foundations. Everything I've talked about so far, I'm just like, it has a skin-like finish. This has a skin-like finish. Uh, because honestly, for me, 2020 was kind of that year where I wanted everything to just melt in. I wanted it to look seamless and beautiful, but really not give me a finish that was like super dewy or super matte. I just wanted to be right in the middle, and I feel like if that's you and you're looking for beautiful, beautiful coverage, this is a fantastic, fantastic concealer. All right, so next up, we're getting into powders, and you guys, I gotta talk about the Halo Glow Setting Powder. I am wearing it today, um, and I just, I use it every single day. I think this is such a fantastic powder. I'm not gonna talk about it a ton, because I've talked about it in the video I tested it out. I've talked about it in my favorites video, and like <laughs> literally every video since then, uh, but I just wanted to, again, give it a little head nod. It is absolutely beautiful. I use it as like a finishing powder over my cheek and whatnot. I like to take it on like a fluffier type brush. Today I use this one from Wayne Goss and I like to take just a little bit of it and kind of run it over my cheeks and my entire face like this and it just gives such a beautiful refined lightly glowy look to the skin it's definitely not something like when you hear halo glow setting powder i feel at least if you're like me anyways uh, i feel like it gives kind of the connotation that it's going to be overwhelming that it's just going to be you know hyper glowy and just be kind of crazy and it's actually the exact opposite it is the most subtle most beautifully blurring look on the skin even for the amount of product you get in here like obviously it's elf so it's pretty inexpensive but it's definitely a powder that a little goes a long way if you use it like I do. And so it's going to last forever. It's just, oh God, it's so, so beautiful the way it sits on the skin. Highly recommend. All right. So real quick, I'm just adding some of the next powder to my face right now. And that is none other than the number seven lift and illuminate. You guys, this powder has changed my world. It has changed the game. And this is one that I got when I tested out uh, Jessica Braun's favorite makeup, which I will link up here. And this powder, I just, I've said it a million times before. I've talked about this in so many videos, but if you are looking for something and you're like near my skin tone, and you want something that's going to give you a beautiful, smooth, brightening effect under the eyes. If you like that effect even over your entire face, yes, it has a natural finish. I'm just going to say it. But even more than that, it has like a, a nice natural luminescent to it where it just reflects the light. Not in, um, not in like a brightening or shimmery kind of way, but the powder itself is just so, so finely milled that when you put it up under your eyes, it just gives you the, that, that brightness that it kind of reflects. It gives that to your under eyes and it is just so, so, so stunning. And this is obviously a powder. I mean, you can tell if there's a hole in the center here. Um, I have used this over and over and over again. I will 100% repurchase. And I think it is like one of, this is probably this and that Halo Glow setting powder. These are probably two of my favorite products that I found high end or drugstore in the year 2020, because I think that for the price, for the product, for what it does, it's just so good. It's so underrated. And I feel like, or maybe it's not underrated. I don't know, but I really feel like everybody should try this. It is amazing. All right. So for bronzers, I'm not going to lie. I, I tried a a fair amount of them in 2020, both high-end and drugstore. But on the drugstore side, there really wasn't any of them that like stuck out to me as like, oh my God, that's the best bronzer in the world. So for this category, I just wanted to shine another little light here on the Essence Matte Bronzing Powder, because uh, this is what I use today, and I freaking love it. I love the color, the texture. It buffs into the skin amazing. And this is one that I've talked about before. I think I've talked about it for the last year or two years, maybe. Honestly, for the size of the pan and for what you pay, it is so good. It'll last you forever. And again, if you're super pasty like me, it's a really great shade. I have it in the shade 01 Natural, and I just, I really, really love it. I think it's a great, great texture, beautiful bronzer. All right, you guys, so going into blush, I'm sure that you expect me to have like 15 blushes because I will admit on the high-end side, I did have, I did have about 15 blushes, but uh, I honestly only have four blushes for today. Two of them are from L'Oreal, so that's where I'm gonna start. And I'm gonna give a little bit of a head nod to the L'Oreal Melon Dollar Baby Blush. And this is in the shade 03 Watermelon. Melon Addict. It's just a beautiful, light little pinky shade. And this is a collection. I wanted to start off with this one because I don't know if it was ever even <laughs> released to the U.S. or not. Uh, so I might not be able to link this one, but I really do just find that L'Oreal blushes work really, really well for me. And this was a color that I used a ton. It was just such a nice, bright, light pink color on my skin. It worked beautiful in the summer. I think for me with L'Oreal, one of my favorite products for them, hands down, would have to be their Age Perfect uh, blushes. Well, actually, the entire Age Perfect line, I really, really like. But this blush right here, this is in the shade 415 Peony, and I also have it in the shade 420 Marigold. This one I don't wear as much because it's a little bit brighter than what I normally reach for. But this shade, okay, this shade right here, ooh, ooh, bitch, this is the Peony blush shade of my dreams. I love it so much. I love the texture. And you'll also see, by the way, a lot more things uh, from the L'Oreal Age Perfect line throughout this video. I think I have 
four things total, total maybe. Um, and that's just because I, I feel like this collection overall worked really, really well for so many people. It was very, very inclusive for several different types of skin, whether you have, you know, larger pores, texture, fine lines, wrinkles, crevasses, you know, all those type of things. Y'all know me, okay? I am a crevassy little bitch. I just got them all over the place. And I feel like this collection from L'Oreal really just did a great job working for a lot of different people. So I have several favorites, uh, especially given that I am a really porous, wrinkly, crevassy, textured little lady, okay? I got some situations. And uh, so I, I really personally enjoyed a lot of the line, but this is the, one of my favorite blushes of the year, hands down. Right now, next up, we have the blush box from Catrice, and I don't know why I felt the need to grab every every single one, but if you have not tried these blush boxes, I think I talked about them maybe in 2019 as well. I also talked about these a lot in 2020 in the first part of the year because these are just super smooth. The consistency is amazing. The colors are great. I really don't have anything to add on those because they're just absolutely amazing. Like I've, I've talked about them so many times at this point um, that I, I just think they're amazing. So definitely check those out if you haven't. And then the final item I have in the blush category, you guys, these little blushes from Essence, these are their blushes that are called The Blush, which rightfully named, okay, I think these are so, so damn good. They're like $3. And I have them in the shade Beloved and Befitting. And y'all, Befitting, this, this one right here, okay, this was my gateway bitch coming into these blushes. I think that this shade, I mean, they're both beautiful, but this one, <gasps> honey boo-boo child, okay? It is so, so beautiful. But I think what's so special about these is the fact that they have such a beautiful, refined texture to them, especially for the price that you pay. Like, they just, they have a way of settling in and giving your cheek, like, this nice kind of healthy, glowy feel to them without ever infusing, like, any weird, um, like, any weird glitter or shimmer. It's just, like, the texture of these is so satiny smooth that they kind of translate that same kind of satiny smoothness to your cheek. Okay, now going into brows, you guys, I tried so much, okay, so much brow stuff this year, and I definitely feel like, you know, I did my fair share sprinkling it between high-end and drugstore, but when I sit down and I think about the best drugstore brow products that I discovered hands down in 2020, it would have to be, and I, I literally just talked about this in my previous video, but the e.l.f. Brow Wow Brow Gel, this stuff is so good, okay? If you are not sure, if you want to get into brow gel, if you like that tint, this color, I use it in the shade Brunette. It's, again, what I'm wearing right now. Um, this is just such a fantastic, fantastic freaking option. I think it's amazing. It gives you that nice little floofy factor, but it's also not overly rich. It works into the brows. It gives you that nice color. And then for me, for filling in, you know, in those areas where I have basically no brow hair, which is like the entire second half right here, um, I have been using, loving, and obsessing over the Weekend Brow from Milani. I think that that is one of the best little brow flick type options. So if you're someone that's wanting to test out like that little hair flick um, kind of motion or mimicking brow hairs, uh, rather with like a brow pen like this, I highly recommend that one again, Milani Weekend Brow. It is so, so good. And I really like both of these options too, because if you're someone like me that was looking to, you know, kind of transform your brows, like you wanted to try a different technique, but you didn't know if you would like it, these are a great place to start because if you can get uh, the Milani one and the e.l.f. together, I think for like right around 10 bucks. And that way too, not only do you get a feel for the type of product you'd be purchasing if you decided to go high end, but you would also get a feel for that application method and see if it's something you enjoy. Right now going in for highlight, you guys know I am a highlight queen, uh, but I will admit that most of my favorite highlights for 2020 were definitely on the high end side, but I did have one that really, really stood out to me. The Revlon Skin Lights Prismatic Highlighter. This is in the shade 201 Daybreak Glimmer, and this freaking highlight is so beautiful. It is smooth. The texture is amazing. Ooh, it is so, so good. Sorry, just look at that. Look at the beauty, the glimmer. It blends out like a freaking dream. And I'm sorry, but like, look at her go. Look at her shine. It's it's so unbelievably reflective, super smooth, blends in. If you have texture, this doesn't emphasize it. It's just, oh, it is such an amazing highlight. And then of course, I have to put it out there. I think this is like year two or three in running, uh, but I have to throw it back to my Rach Loves Pixie palette. <laughs> okay, this palette, look at, look at her. Okay, she is looking rough. She's looking busted. <gasps> Did you guys see that? Oh. Okay, so I'm gonna need somebody to call me a doctor because I'm gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> One of the shades just fell out of this palette, and when I tell you, this is my go-to palette. It has been everywhere with me. It is like my favorite, like, look at her, okay? She has been beat up. I will say, I'm at least grateful that if one of the pans, one of the big ones, had to fall out, that it wasn't this shade because this is the lighter of the two. It's the one that I use. This is the shade Clutch. But I am so sad because I loved putting this shade all over my lid. Oh my God, you guys, I'm so sad. Like, I'm sorry, just look at her. <laughs> oh my God. 
so good. All right, so anyways, as I was saying before, and before my entire world literally fell apart, um, I think that this, it's still, sh it's still shedding, I'm sorry. Um, but I think that this is one of <laughs> the best palettes I have ever purchased in my entire life, hands down. Me personally, what I love with this, or the reason that I've gravitated and used it so much, is because not only do I use it all over like my face as a highlight, but I also love, love taking this purple shade and this brown shade right here all over my lid as options here. I'm gonna go ahead and swatch these for you. Oh my God. And they're so silky, so buttery. Just look, I mean, I feel, I feel like from this distance, you can't really see them, but like, look at that purple shade. Oh my God. Okay, hold on. Let me wipe up. Oh my God, no. It's so beautiful. Okay, so I just got highlighter under my fingernails, <laughs> trying to pick up the big chunk that's on the floor because they're so soft and so buttery that you can't pick them up, okay? That's the level of soft, buttery goodness I'm talking about where you can't even pick it up because it's so soft, so soft. All right, so next up for setting sprays, you guys, I'm just, I'm not even gonna give it any time, okay? The Catrice Dewy Glow Setting Spray, I talk about it all year, every year. Year, every video I use it constantly and I think out of all my setting sprays this is probably my favorite high-end or drugstore it just gives such a beautiful glow to your skin while like I said kind of pressing everything together but it's never too much like it, it never looks like um it never looks like it's too hydrating or where it's gonna like break up your foundation nothing like that it's just the perfect perfect balance of glowy beautiful dewy looking setting spray oh I love it so much definitely check it out and then the other one I want to talk about is actually from wet and wild and this one is technically obviously their cucumber one I just wanted to use it up but their regular just their original um photo focus three-in-one setting spray is so so good and I didn't even realize how much I liked this until probably the last I would say like two or three months of 2020 the mist definitely isn't like as fine as some other ones so keep that in mind but just in terms of the product I feel like it does such a great job setting down my makeup really pressing everything together all right now one thing that I did forget to talk about in my high-end video <laughs> because it was so damn long and I kept you know having a thousand products but I forgot to talk about eyeliners in that video so I just want to give like a brief little FYI on the high-end side I was freaking obsessed with the Fenty liners this year because you know in previous years I've talked about other favorites we have the Urban Decay I love those ones I also really really love the Marc Jacobs highliners those are amazing but this year the one that I did discover on the high-end side was Fenty and it's so weird too because I feel like every year I discover a new eyeliner that I really like and so now it's really fun because on the drugstore I actually have two Two that I really really like one of them I do not have because I've used up everything I had both current and all my backups and that is the Maybelline I think it's their tattoo studio or something like that it's the gel one that you put in your waterline I'll go ahead and make sure it's linked down below but I freaking love that eyeliner I think it is so so good and then also we need to talk about the NYX epic wear liners these are so freaking fantastic you guys I have them in so so many colors and I feel like these are some of the best eyeliners I have ever used like drug store or high end. This one right here is in the shade, what is this, Turquoise Storm. And I, like, watch the creaminess, okay? Just watch it. Oh, oh my God, okay? Color, beautiful. Texture, amazing. This one is a more shimmery pencil, obviously. And then I've also been really loving this shade as far as, like, the fun little pops. This one is in the shade Intense Teal. And they are both just so beautiful. They're very, very vibrant. Like, the, these are the type of pencils, you know how sometimes you'll use an eyeliner, and when you swatch it or when you see it online, it looks super amazing and just, oh my God, it has so much body and so much color. Color, but then when you get it home and you actually physically apply it to your waterline, it doesn't give you that. Like it just, it kind of looks like shit. And these are not like that. They give you that same amount of beauty, that same intensity, that same full bodied color that you see online, that you get in swatch. They really deliver it and they do such a beautiful job. They last amazing. And I just, I really love them. Again, whether you're going fun colors, basic black, brown, I love both. And these are so, so good. Highly recommend. All right. So next up, we're going to get into eyeshadows and I want to give a huge shout out to the one that I couldn't find first because that little guy is from Flower Beauty. It's actually a big guy and that would be the Jungle Palette or the Jungle Pop Palette or something. I'll have a picture on the screen. And that palette I believe is made up of six or eight shades and they're all like larger pans. They're all super beautiful, very bright, very impactful and it's just such an easy go-to palette for me because they're all shimmer so I would throw them on the lid, maybe a little bronzer through the crease and just mwah. Okay, Chef's Kiss perfection on those colors. They were amazing. Uh, there were some that were bright and poppy, some that were neutral so you could go both ways with it. It was just a great great palette. So I wanted to mention that. And now this next one is one that a lot of other people have talked about, so I'm not going to stay here for too long, but e.l.f. killed it with their bite-sized shadows. You guys, these are so unbelievably good. My favorites are, hold on, my favorites are the Rose Water. This is like the mauve pink set. Love those. Of course, I love the brown one here. This is in Pumpkin
pumpkin pie. It has deeper tone, kind of bronzy nude shades. I, oh my God, this green one. Oh shit, yes. This was in hot to hot, hot, what the fuck? Hot, hot jalapeno. I kept wanting to say hot tamale and I'm like, tamale, don't start with a J. Well, that's because it doesn't say tamale now, does it? And the texture of not only the shimmers, but the mattes in these, you guys, you could not convince me that these were not high end. Like that's how they feel. That's how they apply. They are so, so, so good. If you hear other people talking about them, there's a reason, okay? Well, actually, there's a reason everybody is talking about these because they're so good. Next up, I do have two ColourPop palettes and I know everybody feels differently about ColourPop if you, you know, think they're drugstore, high end, indie, whatever. Uh, but for me, I usually throw them in with the drugstore section. And the first one I have to talk about is the Garden Variety. This palette I used so freaking much. I love that pop of green in there. I love the purples. I love the neutral shades. Like th this was just such an easy go-to palette for any day where I wanted a neutral eye. If I wanted neutral with a pop of fun on the lower, if I wanted that green all over the lid, anything like that. Sorry, I really, I really got to shorten the strap. Uh, but anything like that, it was just so easy to use. And even like the packaging, it was just so inspiring to me on like a color, uh, color story basis. I really, really like this palette. Still do. I, st I still use it a lot actually. Um, and then the other one that I have from them is their Sailor Moon palette. Now this one really surprised me because I went, I went through a phase in 2020 where I wanted like all of these beautiful, bright kind of poppy, more, more like fluorescent -y type shades right here. And this palette actually proved to be perfect for me because not only did it have those beautiful pops, but it also had, I mean, you can see I went in deep on these two right here. All right, so this is a launch that really caught me off guard. The LA Girl palettes that came out. Oh, oh my God, you guys, these are so, so unbelievably good. I have them. These are their Keep It Playful palettes, by the way. And this one right here is in foreplay. This one is in downplay. And both of them are absolutely freaking beautiful. Like the texture, the way that they blend. I know I've talked about these before, uh, probably three or four times. I'll actually, you know what I'll do? I'll go ahead and I'll link the video where I first tested these up here. Uh, if you want to see them in action and like you really want to get a feel for the, the shimmer, the glimmer, the application, because it is seamless. I'll just say it right now. Okay. Some of these, like this shade right here. Oh my God. This silver is unreal. Like for it being a drugstore, by the way, that was a horrible swatch and it still looks absolutely beautiful. Also too, there is a hot pink if you're not into either of these. Um, I did buy it. I haven't tried it yet, which is obviously why it's not being featured here because these two I can vouch for, uh, but there is another one if you're curious and these are just, oh my God, the quality is insanely good on these and literally no one talks about them. I don't know why, but they are so, so good. All right, so I have two mascaras to talk about. The first one I don't have anymore because I used up all the, I think I had two or three of them actually in my bin and I blew through them all and that would be none other than the L'Oreal Age Perfect Mascara. You guys, if you have been here all of 2020, that was one of my ride or die mascaras. I used it every single day. It gives such a beautiful, like somehow a naturally lifted, really lengthened look to my lashes. It builds amazingly. And I really, really like that. For me, that was my first half of 2020, like drugstore favorite for mascara. And this next one has been my most recent find. And oh my God, okay, this full fan effect from Maybelline. This is, wait, is that right? The Lash Sensational, yeah, full fan effect. This mascara is amazing. Amazing. I am actually currently on my second tube of this and it is so unbelievably good. I love everything about it. The application, the length, it builds amazing. It gives me such a fantastic amount of volume at the base of my lashes. It pulls through and again, nice and lengthening. And this is one too. I think I saw this used, was it on Instagram or TikTok? No, I don't go on TikTok. So it must've been Instagram, but I saw somebody use this and I was like, is it really that good? And I wanted to try it because I just love testing mascaras and I regret nothing. It has changed the game for me. I like, I love this so much. So go Going into lip liners, I had to grab just one ColourPop. I know I've talked about these lip liners a ton in past years, so I'm not gonna stay here a lot, but the ColourPop lip liners are fan, fan freaking tastic. This is one of my favorite shades. It's in the shade Beeper, and it's kind of like the perfect mix between a pinky brown nude like type situation, and I just really love it. These are so good. Texture is amazing. Just 10 out of 10 recommend. Again, talked about them before, but I love them. All right, now moving into my 2020 favorites, you guys, <laughs> this freaking lip liner, this is the L'Oreal H perfect, of course. And this is the bright mocha shade right here. I believe out of the entire line, there's like a nudie brown one. And that one is my favorite. But I also really liked this one because it's the first time where I've seen a shimmery lip liner that actually doesn't like feather and make my lips look old and crinkly and crevassy. So I had to mention it. This, this entire line from 
L'Oreal. Again, the Age Perfect lip liners. So, so freaking nice. Then finally, rounding out my second of two <laughs> favorite lip liners for 2020 in the drugstore, I would have to give it to the Essence Stay 8-Hour Lip Liner. They're waterproof, and it comes with a little sharpener at the end. And these freaking lip liners are so good, you guys. When you want to talk about a lip liner that will stay put, that is inexpensive, it is these. And, and by the way, I am somebody, I have the worst luck getting stuff to stay on my lip line, lipstick, glosses, anything. They just want to run all over the damn place. And these lip liners are amazing. My favorite shade is this one right here. Hold on. This is in the shade Because Da. And it's obviously like the nudie brown type shade, but oh my God, like look at the level of creamtasticness. These are so, so good, you guys. All right. So I just want you guys to know, <laughs> I'm normally not this disjointed, but when I film favorites videos that are this big, I like to keep all of the products in a box in front of me. And then when I'm talking about a category like eyeshadow or something like that, I keep all of the eyeshadows kind of placed around me on my lap. That way I don't forget to talk about them. And this one right here definitely slid under my big old beefy man thigh and I forgot to talk about it. So I got to go back a second and just give it up here to this Kaleidos palette. This is the Kaleidos, hold on here. This is their Futurism uh, Sashimi City palette. Now I do receive PR from Kaleidos, so this was sent to me, but you guys, this palette is so, so freaking good. I love it so much. I reached for this on a day to day to day basis. All of the colors are beautiful. They blend like a freaking dream and I just love a good little neutral palette. And you know what? Actually, while I'm on the topic, this palette from Kaleidos, I used a freaking ton as well. Um, look at how, oh my God, remember how I said I was going through a beautiful bright poppy phase? Y'all, I use this so, so much. I actually talked about this in a favorites video. It was like a month or two after it came out. But this palette is absolutely fantastic. Again, the colors and the blend and everything is on point, just like with the other one. But if you are into these beautiful, vibrant freaking shades, highly, highly recommend. This is their Escape Pod palette. Oh my God, in the packaging. Ugh, I fell in love. Like I'm, I'm a big lime green buff. You guys know this about me. And if you don't, hello, I love lime green. It's like my favorite color. And so everything about this, like just packaging wise, definitely called to my soul. But then this color story, so, so, so good. I think for me, honestly, Kaleidos just kind of slayed it this year. Like they put out a ton of good stuff. They have their palettes, their brushes are so nice. And oh my God, their highlights. How did I not put one of their highlights in this video? And actually speaking of, um, I do have one sitting right next to me. This is in the shade Ray Rider. You guys, their highlights are so, so, so good. I can't believe I forgot to put their highlights in this video. Oh my God. I have worn Ray Rider so, so freaking much. I just, I just love their stuff. All right. Now going into the lips, I don't really have a ton to talk on because there's a lot of these products I have talked about in previous years, but I just wanted to give another little head nod to a couple of them. Starting off with this Maybelline. This is the Maybelline cream lipstick in the shade 144 Naked Dare. And I freaking love this lipstick. You guys, the Maybelline lipsticks in general, if you've never tried them, they are so, so beautiful. And I just, oh my God. I love that this is such a beautiful creamy formula. It sits on the lips amazing. The color is great if you're someone like me especially that loves to have like that darker nude lip line. And then also another one I really liked from Maybelline is this one right here. It is their Superstay Ink Crayon and this is in the shade, wait do I have the shade? Oh yeah this is in the shade Lead the Way number 15 and it is so freaking creamy. It's such a beautiful pinky like petal pink shade. And not only is the formula of this really great you know like the the consistency of it's really smooth. It just glides on like a dream but these also are just so easy to apply. Like in terms of the shape, the, the way that they were designed, I feel like everything pairs beautifully for just a nice even lip application. Another one with that same kind of profile here, this is the Milani Ludicrous Matte Lip Crayon. And I will say this, by the way, this is in the shade 150 Lovesick. Um, and the, oh my God, like so freak, hello. Can you even see how creamy that is? It's ridiculous. This is coming from somebody who like this year, I really didn't gravitate much towards matte anything. It's just, I really feel like I was in like a cream slash glossy kind of stage in my life this year. But even with that being the case, I found that the Milani uh, Ludicrous Matte Lip Crayons are so good because they're more of like a comfortable application for a matte. And then another one that I love, this is from Revlon. It's their cream uh, lipstick in the shade 763 Make Me Blush. And oh my God, this color is just, <laughs> can you see that I have a color palette that I really like? Uh, but this color right here is so, so beautiful. If you're liking that more, um, I would say this is more of like a brick toned pink type shade. It's kind of like that perfect cross in between. And I love, actually, you know what? I'm gonna leave this one out because I haven't got to wear her in a while and I freaking love that color. And then also as my final installment to the L'Oreal Age Perfect, I wanna talk about their bullet lipsticks. Uh, this isn't the color I would reach for a lot, but these are their uh, Age Perfect lipsticks. I'll make sure, you know what? I'm actually gonna link down below because I can't remember the exact color, but I will leave it linked down below the one that I really, really loved because these lipsticks are freaking amazing. Now this one is in the shade 118 
rich chestnut and obviously I really like it I've worn it actually a fair amount for it being a darker shade like this but what I love about these from L'Oreal is the color and the way that they like settle into your lips and actually yeah these ones have the hydrating core to them too so they don't like dry out your lips they sit they're super comfortable and I just really really like these you know same thing with the lip liners pairing the two together perfection on the lip. And then going into gloss, there are two I want to mention, and the one I don't have with me, I think I left it in my purse, and that would actually be the Maybelline Lifter Gloss, which I think is so freaking good. The The color of it, like the way that it shines on the lips is absolutely beautiful, so I wanted to give her an honorable mention, if and you will. And then the other one I got to mention is from Morphe. This is in the shade Freebird, and I freaking love this gloss. I actually fell in love with Morphe glosses at the beginning of 2020. I just think they are so beautiful. This shade specifically just like sings to my heart and soul. But Morphe glosses, I'm actually going to apply some right now. Oh my god, these are just so, so great. I love the colors. I love the texture. And I really, really appreciate with these that they are a thinner formula. So they're not like an overwhelming, like thick, goopy type situation. Like, you know, like others that I've talked about recently in my Makeup I Love That Doesn't Love Me Back video, which I will link up here. I talked about a very specific gloss in there and if you watch the video you know I just really don't like that thick goopy mim mim type situation as discussed there and with these ones I really just fell in love with the consistencies the color all right you guys with that it is your turn down in the comments I've officially listed off all of my favorite 2020 drugstore makeup and I would now like it if you would do the same you can list me off one two ten whatever your favorites are um, I would just love to hear from you because honestly you guys have some stellar recommendations when it comes to makeup so let me know all of yours down below and of course as I said at the start of the video you guys can subscribe turn on your post notifications follow me on instagram everything would be greatly appreciated and i will have all of this makeup linked down below if you want to shop it but you guys i think that that is everything thank you all so so much for watching please don't forget to have an amazing day night weekend whatever it is when you're watching this and i'll see you in the next one bye oh yes now for blush this is where it's about to get real we got blushes to talk about blushes 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 oh my god look at this cute little moment ooh, 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 ooh. now for settings <sighs> hair in my mouth <laughs> for spelling this morning Okay, so I basically just created a paste of highlight on the floor and um, proceeded to just smear it all over the place. So <laughs> that's, that's really good. Good job, Paige. Oh! What is wrong with me today? Where, oh, where did the bronzer go? I don't know. Please tell me so. I don't have to sit here and waste my time looking for it all day and night. Yeah. I can't believe that was like actually decent. I mean, it's not a good song, but it was like a decent put together. Good job, Paige. I'll pat you on the back when no one else will.